Hi everybody, how you doing? I'm Gary. Uh, I've decided to start uh, a YouTube channel focusing on uh, backyard barbecue. Uh, probably for the last 10 years I've done hundreds of cooks on various kinds of food and I, I share with friends and family and co-workers and uh, assuming a small percentage of them aren't just being polite, they seem to like it. So I get asked a lot about my recipes and I decided to document some of them via video. So uh, here we go. Today I want to do a Jack Daniels glazed um, ribs and uh, I'm also going to do a spatchcock chicken at the same time. So one of the things I've not used before is a, a drum smoker and I've always wanted to try it. So I bought a, <clears throat> an accessory for my Weber Smoky Mountain that's going to allow me to hang one of the racks uh, vertically in that in that uh, in that smoker and I'm going to do the other rack on my uh, Rectech uh, pellet grill um, pretty much my standard go-to for for most of the cooks I do so um, I'll go out and get the grills going and uh, let's get to cooking okay so I'm gonna go ahead and get the ribs ready uh, I've already rinsed them off Peeled off the sheath on the back that, I don't know, some people leave it on. Personally, I think it, for one thing, it helps deter the rub from getting flavor down into the meat. And uh, I just think it adds a little bit more bite through on the finished product that you really just don't need. Certainly it's easy to take off and it doesn't hurt anything to take it off. I like to use just a regular old yellow mustard as a binder, uh, just something to help the rub stick. When this is done, you won't taste the, uh, the mustard. It'll be uh, just there to hold the rub on. So I'm gonna use as a, a base coat, Killer Hogs, the AP rub. It's a uh, salt pepper garlic mix along with some other spices that a little bit more savory you want to use this stuff fairly sparingly so I just put a little bit on put that on both of these I kind of find I have better success if I hold the shaker bottle a little higher so the rub doesn't clump up and then I'm not going to rub this in I'm just going to pat it a little bit kind of help it stick and then for the uh, for the second layer of flavor uh, this is a product from Cosmo Q's uh, this guy has uh, an amazing series of cooks and videos and, and a really good line of products so I'm going to use that today. These ribs are a little meatier than some, so you kind of have to gauge how much you put on by how much meat you got. Some of these are really thin. You can definitely overspice. And at the end of the day, we want the taste of the meat to be at the forefront. This is just an accent really helps with the color and it's a lot of good stuff I've made my own rubs I still do over the years I've kind of you know these guys are pros they compete they've worked on this a long time and I have to say they taste better than the ones I make so same thing on the other side. Got to get a little layer of the a savory AP. Just a light coating on there. Pat that in a little bit. Back with some more of the Cosmos. Uh, this is called Honey Killer Bee. It's a sweet rub. Sugar, honey, lots of different spices. It's just the tiniest bit of heat. 
but nothing that's going to blow your head off. It's really good. So that's about it. Turn these back over. I'm going to let those sit for a little bit here. I've got the grills fired up. It'll probably take 20-30 minutes for, for it to uh, get up to temp. So I'm just going to let this kind of sit. The, the salts in, in some of these will kind of start to soak into the meat a little bit and they'll, uh, they'll sweat. Makes the rub look wet really helps hold it on so that's about all I'm going to do here for this and I'll see you out at the grill okay so I've got my hot coals ready I'm going to go ahead and I think I put about 30 briquettes in the chimney to get started and uh, those are just going to slowly uh, catch on with the rest that I already have in there. I think I have about 120 briquettes in there. We'll just set the top on. I've got my bottom vents open about a third all the way around. You can kind of see the coals going in there. Once that gets going a little bit, I'm going to put on a couple of chunks of, uh, of cherry wood. So we'll see you once that gets going. Okay, so got the grills going. Everything's just about ready to put on. I'm going to spatchcock this chicken real quick. It's pretty simple, basically. You can use a pair of shears or a sharp knife. And all we're really going to do is just cut the backbone out of it. And then turn it around. Let's go right down the other side. Crunch, crunch. A lot of people hang on to these, use them. They make really good stock for soups. So you get it apart, kind of use this opportunity to trim off some of this extra skin, fat, things that you don't want. Someday when I'm a millionaire, I'll be able to afford a knife <laughs> that can cut through skin. And then basically, we just turn it over, give it a press, and just that easy, it lays flat. This will cook in no time at all. Gives you access to everything. You kind of clean up the, the little extra pieces that you don't want. And then I'm just going to use a real basic seasoning on this. One of the things I like to do is kind of work my hand under the skin a little bit. Kind of get down in there. You don't want to poke holes in it. Even though I already cut a hole in it when I opened the package. But if you get down in there, like so, get that loosened up a little bit. <clears throat> Same on the thighs. Just kind of pull back that skin. It gives you access to the meat a little better for your seasonings. And it really makes a difference, I've found, in the finished product. So, I'm going to use Harry Sue's Slap Yo Daddy. Um, this is an all-purpose rub. He uses this in a lot of competitions. Seems to have good luck with it. I just basically hold that open, pour a little bit in there, pour a little bit in the brass. Probably a little bit less than that. A little bit in there. A little bit in there. And then we just massage that in. 
rub it around, get it down in the nooks and crannies. And then I like to take, take and get a little bit on the inside. So, and then just kind of get all the, get up on the skin, down in here, on both sides. Just like that. And, uh, Again, I don't really rub it. It kind of tends to make it ball up. Put a little sprinkle, pat it on. She's ready to go. Uh, I'm not good. This is only going to take about an hour and a half, and those ribs are going to be more of a probably a four hour cook. So I'll put that on in a little while. Once I get the ribs on, let them cook for a bit. Probably about the time I wrap uh, the ribs, then I'll, I'll put this on. So we'll see you out at the grill. Okay, it's been about 45 minutes. I got my smokers up to temp. I'm going to go ahead and get the ribs on. We'll put these on first. I'm going to hang these right about here. And uh, if you can kind of see down in there, they're a little bit close to the coals, not too bad. I'm not going to have them in there the whole cook, but you can kind of move some of the fire away, get a little, little divot in there, and uh, we'll let them smoke. I'll probably spritz them with water or apple juice about every probably 45 minutes or so. So uh, we'll check back in a little bit on that one. The other rack's going to go on the rep tech. Light on. We just lay these in just like so. One little tip on ribs when you put them in, if you mush them together, you tend to get a lot meatier result uh, at the end. And then, probably about at the time I wrap, a couple hours, I'll go ahead and put the spatchcock chicken in on this side. So we'll see you in a couple hours. Okay, so I got the meat on. While we wait, I'm going to go ahead and get started, excuse me, on the glaze that we're going to put on these ribs and this chicken. And I'm going to start with one cup. Eight ounces of barbecue sauce. I'm using Cosmos Q competition barbecue sauce, but you can use whatever your favorite sauce is. Uh, but I really like that. We're going to put in two tablespoons of pineapple juice. Put that in there. I'm going to go with two tablespoons of honey. I guess there is a measuring cup or a dispenser on Amazon that really makes it easy to measure and dispense honey. It, uh, kind of like a syringe. It, it's easy to load and it just squirts it right out. This is some uh, natural honey we bought at the farmer's market here in 
Wenatchee, Washington, Apple Capital of the World. And it is thick and gooey. It's the first time I've ever used it. <clears throat> so, see what that is like. Looks good. Looks good to me. And I'm going to put in two tablespoons of Jack Daniels. Down in there, a cup of sugar. And that be that. I'll bring this to a boil, and then uh, as soon as it begins to boil, I'll turn it off, uh, cover it, and simmer it for probably 20 minutes so the flavors can combine. And uh, we'll get her uh, ready for the food. Okay, so it's been about 45 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and give these ribs a little spin and a little spritz. Oh, they smell amazing. Start to get a nice color. even cooking. Put the lid back on. I'm not sure if I mentioned before, but I did put a, another chunk of cherry wood on here a little while ago. Add that nice cherry wood smoke. And we'll do the same. Just so they don't dry out. And uh, We'll see you back here in a little bit. Okay, it's been about 90 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and get these ribs wrap, uh, wrapped in foil. I noticed my Weber Smoky Mountain's been cooking at a little bit higher temp than my Rectech. And I think they've taken in as much smoke as I want them to. I'm going to go ahead and get them inside, get them wrapped. The color is nice. They look beautiful. Have a little charring on the bottom where they were down near the coals. I'm going to get the lid on real quick so that temp doesn't shoot up on me. And uh, I'm going to take these in, wrap them, and then by the time I get done with that, uh, I'll be able to get the others. I'll give you a quick shot of what these look like. You can really see a difference from there to there. Pellet uh, grill versus uh, regular smoke. So we'll see how they uh, come out and taste in the end. I'm probably not going to shoot the wrap for the second uh, rack. <clears throat> uh, so I'll uh, see you inside. Okay, I brought the first rack in uh, from the Weber Smoky Mountain. One of the things I noticed is there's clearly a difference in color uh, between these, uh, these on the <coughs> Weber Smoky Mountain and the, uh, pellet grill. So I don't know if you can see that, but it's just an amazing color. It smells, I can't, uh, I wish you could smell this. So what I've done <coughs> is I put down some brown sugar, some butter, four pats of butter, <coughs> and I have this, uh, Mike's Hot Honey that I picked up at a, uh, I'm not sure, a meat store somewhere. <clears throat> and I've used it before on some other things and it's just a really mild heat. So I'm gonna put the ribs on there like so. Get this glove off. And then I'll do the same to the other side. Uh, 
take some butter. I just use some pats of butter. I see lots of people use the blue parquet squirt butter for this. For some reason, I can't seem to find it in the store. I guess I'll have to order some online. <clears throat> so we're going to do a little butter. A little brown sugar. And a little uh, of the Mike's Hot Honey. You can use regular honey. You can use a little variety of things. Just do whatever you want. This is what I kind of uh, tend to do and it doesn't take much I usually do just a drizzle you have to open it I've noticed that helps just a little schlob that's a technical term that us pit masters know and then I double wrap these. These bones will poke through. Uh, basically, you're braising at this point, <clears throat> so they're going to steam inside of their juices. <clears throat> so it's real important that you don't rip through the foil. At this point, so I've already got my foil laid out. I'm going to wrap. You want to get this as tight as you can. I usually just go. Once over, once over. If you leave ribs on too long in the smoke, they can actually get a little bit of a bitter, a bit of flavor. So I'd normally go two hours on my pellet grill. But for this, uh, I just did 90 minutes. So it's been about 90 minutes in smoke. Uh, it ran about 300 degrees. I had a tough time keeping the tent down on my Weather Smoky Mountain. It was a little bit breezy. And uh, frankly, I was out in the garage drinking beer and I wasn't watching it as close as I probably should have. So when I put these back on, I'm going to put them meat side down. Uh, I'm going to go out, put these back on, and I'll bring the other rack in and season them the same way. So I'm not going to video that. And we'll get them back on. Probably let them run for another, I'd say, 90 minutes. And then we'll check them for uh, tenderness. Okay, so I've wrapped the first rack. I'm going to go back on the Weber Smoky Mountain. Uh, one of the nice features of this is <clears throat> I can now take out the hanging rack put in my my top rack as I normally would and I'm going to run a little temperature probe through there <clears throat> so I know what the ambient temperature at least close to what the ambient temperature is where the meat is going to sit so I'm going to put that in Like so, I'll get these back on the rack, the lid back on. <clears throat> you really don't want to leave that lid off very long. It really uh, churns up the, the, the heat. So as quick as possible, you want to make that switch over. I've got this thing running um, right about 275 again. So. I, I completely shut one of the vents and I have the other two open about a quarter. And that'll give me at least an idea of what my uh, temp is up where the meat is. So I'm thinking <clears throat> probably another hour, hour and a half and we'll start checking for tenderness. Every rack's different. I can already tell the uh, the ones on the Rec Tech are cooking a little bit slower because when I set it at 275, it stayed 
within zero degrees of 275. This kind of turned up to three, 310 at times. So it went a little bit hotter. I expect these to get done sooner. So when they're done, I'll pull them and uh, we'll wait, see what happens. Okay, so it's been about 90 minutes. I just wrapped both racks of ribs. I put them back on the rack in the Weber Smoky Mountain and uh, Rack Tech. So it's time to put the chicken on. I've spats cut uh, this chicken. It should take about an hour, hour and a half to cook. They don't take long when you spatch cook them. Kind of all seasoned up, ready to go. I'm just going to put it in like so. And we'll check on it in a little bit. So it's been about 90 minutes uh, on the second stage, a total of three hours. So I'm going to go ahead and check these for tenderness. One of the first ways you can tell without opening the foil is how limber they are. And they feel pretty good. They feel pretty ready. Uh, they're going to go back on the smoker to set the glaze for a little bit. So I'll put that lid on. and. There's our chicken. I'm going to check that in a second. No. Yep, those feel good. Put that over there. And real quick while I'm here, I'm going to check the temp. And while we're out here real quick, I'm going to check the temp on the chicken. We're looking for 165 on the brass. We're about 120. I usually like to go 180 on the thigh. We're about 165. So that's right where it should be. I'm gonna let that continue to cook. I'm gonna go in, glaze the ribs, and bring them back out and put them on to, uh, to set the glaze. Okay, so it's been about three hours. Uh, I brought both racks in. I'm gonna check them for tenderness and <clears throat> go ahead and put glaze on. You don't really know when they're done by temperature or time. They're done when they're tender. And by tender, I mean, you should be able to put a toothpick or a probe, which I'm gonna get, because <clears throat> my camera girl didn't remind me I needed one. Just when you, when you put a probe in, this still tugs on the meat. It actually lifts the rack up off the foil a little bit. So that's not near tender enough. <clears throat> so I'm very likely going to go ahead and wrap these back up and put them back on the smoker for a little bit longer. But I'll know when they're done, when, they're, when that goes in, it feels like peanut butter. I am going to check the other rack. And I'm not going to glaze these yet until I'm sure they're at the... Uh, tenderness I want. So I'm going to probably give these another half hour and then I'll check okay, back in. So I've, uh, I went ahead and opened the other rack, the one that was on the Weber Smoky Mountain. And clearly you can see there's a little bit difference in color. And I also notice when I probe these, they're not quite ready. They feel there's a little tug back, but, um, these are much closer than the other rack. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put them both back on and uh, in the foil for a little bit longer before I uh, sauce them. But I do notice a big difference in color. Obviously, it, it was out in the exposed smoke uh, versus the Rectech, but they're, they're really close. And uh, I'm probably going to pull these before the others and I'll let them rest and then we'll, we'll uh, cut them both at the same time. Okay, so it's been about four hours total and... We're going to go ahead and uh, glaze these ribs. This is the rack that came from the uh, Weber Smoky Mountain. Just going to check these for tenderness. Oh, yeah. The probe just goes in and out like it was peanut butter. This is, th these are totally done. Um, we're going to pull these off. Go ahead and put a glaze on them. And put them back on the smoker uncovered. Look at that juice. Holy moly. 
probably for about 15 minutes. We're not going to cook them anymore. We just want to set the glaze. Oop, they're coming apart. Look out. So I'm going to very gently move these over to the cutting board and I'll be right back with okay, you. So I just unwrapped the ribs from the Rectech. They're not quite as fall off the bone tender, but they're very tender. There's a little pullback, so I'm going to leave them on a little bit longer. You notice when I put the probe in and I go to pull it out, there's a little tug. There should be no tug. Clearly there's a difference. These are both been on the same time. <clears throat> These cooked at a little higher temperature, uh, probably closer to 300 degrees. These stayed, of course, right at 375, <clears throat> excuse me, 275, uh, where I had them set. So we're going to go ahead and glaze both of these. And then we'll put them back on the grill. Not so much to cook them more, but just to set the glaze. This is our Jack Daniels uh, barbecue glaze that I got from uh, Cosmos Q. Had a video on uh, spatchcock chicken recently that I copied this from. I added my own little flair to it. And uh, we're going to see how it comes out. A lot of the barbecue aficionados say ribs should never really fall off the bone. When you take a bite, you know, there should be a bite mark where your teeth were. These are clearly uh, beyond that. I can barely pick them up. But the color is awesome. They look good. Um, I'm going to turn these over. Glaze the other side. Put them back on. <clears throat> if I can. We have sections that we're going to put these back on. I might not even put these back on, to be honest. These are done. If anything, they're overdone. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and glaze these and just let them rest because I can't see any benefit from more heat. But I'm going to wrap them in foil. And how pretty is that? Clearly, there's a difference in color between the batch I did on my pellet grill and the batch I did on the uh, Weber Smoky Mountain. Excuse me for a moment. Alexa, stop timer. <laughs> there you go. That was the timer I had set for bringing these in, so. Look at that. So these are going to go back on probably for another 15. I may even go 30 minutes on these. They're still a little bit uh, less uh, pliable than I'd like. So uh, I'm going to put them back on. I'll be back in about probably 20 minutes. The other rack of ribs back on the smoker so that the uh, glaze can set. I checked the temp on the chicken. I'm temping about 160 in the breast and about 178 in the thigh. So this is getting close. So I'm just gonna go ahead and glaze the rest of this. You don't wanna uh, brush it too hard because you can actually brush some of the rub off of the skin but just a nice gentle honey barbecue sauce jack daniels 
Oh, so I learned today. <laughs> Who knew? There's something else you can do with Jack Daniels besides barbecue sauce. So I enjoyed that for a little while. Hard to tell maybe, but uh, I'll work on that again in a minute. So I'm gonna glaze this and put it back on for <clears throat> the same amount of time as the ribs I have out there. And we'll let this glaze set. And uh, again, we're not really cooking it so much as we're just firming up that awesome glaze. And I'll be right back. Okay, it's been about four and a half hours total cook time. I've got everything off. Uh, the chicken was timed perfectly to, to cook with the ribs. Uh, gonna do a taste test in a minute. Oh, a shout out to Voodoo Ranger Imperial IPA, Colorado Company, Belgium, uh, New Belgium Brewery. Uh, it's good, good, good IPA. Couldn't stick with Jack Daniels the whole day. One of the things I want to point out on these two pieces of meat, one, you see a lot of shrinkage on the one that uh, was in the Weber Smoky Mountain. I don't know that that means less meat or anything. <clears throat> but there's also a difference in color. Camera girl, could you please zoom in? <laughs> could you please zoom in? I, I notice this is a more what I'm used to, more of a caramel color, beautiful color, fall off the bone, uh, almost. A little bit darker here. There is some charring around the one that I hung, but not too much. Uh, but definitely more of a smoky kind of a, of a, of a color. And then the chicken, uh, is pretty much what I would expect in a chicken. Uh, came out good, uh, cooked quick, I would say an hour and a half. I wouldn't cook a bird any other way than spatchcock again. So uh, let's get to cutting. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this up. Um, I tend to use, these are fairly inexpensive knives uh, from Dexter. I buy these, I buy them from uh, Malcolm Reed's site. How to barbecue right they're <clears throat> i don't know eight ten bucks a piece they take a, a a shark and well and when they wear out you just get another one uh i'm not going to turn these over i usually carve these from the back so you can kind of see where you're going but in this case i'm going to go ahead and prove to you why i carve them from the back <laughs> uh because you tend to hit the tops of the bones. This, this particular rack was so fall off the bone tender that it's, it's really hard to even carve. You can see the meat literally falls off the bone. Most people, uh, at least in, in uh, some communities, want to have uh, tender, but not that tender. This is more like pulled pork tender. Um, so just FYI, I, I probably overcooked this a little bit, but I just wanted to show you the difference. And then uh, here you see the one that came off the pellet grill. It's equally as tender. As you can see, when I tried to flip it over, it just came apart. Uh, this is the best way to carve ribs if you're going to serve them. This one is hard to carve as well because the bones literally just slip out. So just a little comparison there. We have a nice uh, juiciness. I, I know you can't see this, but to squeeze these, they're just filled with uh, juice and flavor. And even the ones that what I would consider to be a little overcooked, they're almost they're just crazy tender. Oh man. So, um, it's, it's, it's really hard to describe how I'm used to ribs that I get in a restaurant that are not sure what you call it, but man, these things are so filled with moisture and flavor and 
You don't taste any alcohol or whatever from the glaze. I'm telling you that flavor is, oh my goodness. Shout out to my son-in-law, Steve, and Dr. Dave. Dr. Dave was actually the first person that got me into this sport or hobby. I had ribs at his cabin one night and they were so good. I just insisted on knowing how. He's not really a doctor, he's a dentist, but, <laughs> sorry Dave, but I'm telling you, these are absolutely delicious. The set that came from the, I'm gonna have to wash these now. There's a liner that you can put underneath your uh, nitro gloves, so you don't have to wear the high heat gloves, and these work really well. You can wash them, they're cheap. Again, Buy them anywhere. I buy mine from Malcolm at How to Barbecue, right? So here's the rack that was done in the rack deck. Mm. Mm. They're not quite as tender. They're not quite as um, melt. But I'm telling you, this is insane. The thing about the rack deck. You set it and forget it. I was out there probably at least 20 times today adjusting the vents, trying to keep my temp right on my Weber Smoky Mountain, which is fine. That's fun if you have the time. But this thing, you set it and you come back when it's done. So I do think there's a little bit more what I would guess I would say traditional barbecue flavor on these uh, hanging ones, but for $299 versus $200, this thing will do everything you want it to do. If you get that accessory, that hanging rack, it turns it into a barrel smoker. Um, I would never give up my rack jack. It's my go-to grill I use it all the time. But I think I got to give the nod in flavor to this this one I did on the uh, Weber Smoky Mountain. It's just crazy. Mm. And that sauce. All right. Oh, one reminder. A couple things were pointed out to me during the process of this. One was don't wear pajamas and suppers when you're doing a video. So, it's a backyard video, and this is what I'm wearing. It's Sunday, and football game's on. Another one is cross-contamination. When you rinse your ribs, if you do, and the reason a lot of people don't, is because when you put that underwater, that water vaporizes and splashes onto a fairly big area. So, you, can, you have to really be careful of bacteria. Um, so let's go to the chicken. Um, I'm going to go ahead and... So I'm moving on to the chicken now. I took it off. It's, it's beautiful collar. It's got a nice firm skin. The, uh, I mean literally you just, it just, <laughs> it just falls apart. I cooked the internal temp on the breast to 165 and I went ahead and went 180 on the the thighs and the uh, legs so wow um, what do you say I remember carving the turkey every year it seems like it's never this easy so I guess we're gonna go with the thigh here uh, the juice, it, it, it's just, it's just filled with moisture. Sorry. Man, I'm not a dark meat person when it comes to poultry usually, but this is so pink and juicy. And that, I'm telling you, if you don't get anything from this video, that Jack Daniels sauce 
Oh my goodness. It's delicious. So, uh, hopefully you'll try this recipe. Uh, I got the recipe uh, for the sauce from Cosmo's uh, Q website. I modified it a little bit for the, the spices I like, but this is a plate full of barbecue that's unbelievable. So hopefully I'll see you again. If you like what we've done, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you on the next cook. So one thing I wanted to, uh, before I leave, is give a shout out to Lewis at Our Shack Barbecue. He's a <clears throat> guy that's got a channel here locally. It's about six miles away from me. He recommended that, yeah, if you know, if you like doing this stuff, go ahead. So I got to give him credit for starting this channel. So cheers.